uh, been working on a concept around benefit factories. So the idea of using, of minting um, collective social and public benefits as NFTs and from using leveraging them to be able to incrementally um, accrue those benefits and what can be possible around all that. So um, have some interest from some some folks in, uh, in cotton and food or cotton and coffee around testing and deploying, but I'm working also with some community foundations and others to see if we can implement it. Really, it's just the idea of how do we better monetize social outcomes in a way that can be treat them as investment um, in an additive way, bring new resources into the ecosystem and progressively move to DAOs that redistribute that and control those resources by those who benefit. So, Kind of very cool very cool yeah michael sent a, a document over do you mind if i share with uh some of the team actually you wrote kind of a succinct um actually it's yeah, a really it's great a really great um kind of synthesis of, of of what we're doing through through um so you you told me this before what do they call the community benefit agreements is that kind of the new uh, word on the yeah. street for sort of social development impact? Yeah, so community benefit agreements is something that's been emerging often around um, city-based infrastructure investments uh, where they define and secure commitments from developers to ensure that they uh, implement aspects and deliver on benefits to the actual community. So often property related at, at the beginning. Uh, but they're getting broader traction and kind of where this really started was just recognizing that we've got boatloads of government infrastructure spending that's rolling um, and how do we intervene in that in ways that help direct it in, uh, towards intentionally and ensuring that um, benefits accrue to communities and ideally in increasing participation by those who realize who potentially realize those benefits in deciding and influencing how those dollars are spent um, and so this this iteration on of this thing around the benefits factory is really trying to find the simplest entry point to um, using NFTs as a as a interesting way to start um, getting at that opportunity. So where are you guys um, issuing the NFTs? Have you found um, a platform that works best for you? Kind of curious yeah, uh, just been uh, just been talking with uh, um, Boris Man at, at Fission just around possible pathways, the right way to uh, we might we might go and, and go at it. And yeah, I'm not sure yet. Yeah, there's definitely more <laughs> platforms these days for it. So yeah, and I, I think for these initial tests, I'm like I, I don't want to get caught up in in big infrastructure choices yet, and just kind of want to find the simplest paths to deploying and um, getting some familiarity. Um, it's also a bunch of work that uh, is happening around specifically. Um, uh, oh shit! I've got to respond to that. Um, looking at what does it mean to design in. Um, uh, intentional social outcomes into token design and token ecosystem design and what does that actually mean from an impact evaluation perspective uh, so trying to sort through a little bit of that and and without again the, the challenge always with the, the impact measurement world has been getting caught up into a super tiny small set of things that can actually be proven out way too late down the game so kind of what I like about the NFTs is opening up the space where we can use art and story and um, implicit meaning to to add some value to all that um, at the outset and then progressively get into measurement and evaluation. But anyway, lots going on there. Awesome. Also yeah, I really like that idea that you sell the story of impact as an NFT. So like, you know, uh, Griff got, you know, uh, an education in this, you know, and he was able to open up a, a business and he was able to, you know, support his family and put a child through, you know, higher education or something like that. And then you sell that as the NFT and you could have 
Oh, the idea is I just shared the doc uh, with, with you guys. If you want to have a look through, it should be in your email. Um, really cool ideas on, you know, what aspects, because I mean, this is already something they use in, in marketing, right? But now you can pay for that story and you can hold that story and that, you know, you can maybe resell that story or, you know, there, when you tokenize an NFT, it there's there's so much uh, potential for funding these kind of these outcomes. Yeah, there's something really interesting too, just in the nature of impact, how it accrues over time, right? It's not something like, like beginning of a growing season, like we're doing a lot of NFTs around seasons, but at the beginning of a growing season, you don't really know what the outcomes are going to be. And those outcomes could accrue over years, right? So what did that, the, that crop harvest uh, mean to the income in the community and created everything else? So the, the really the interesting idea is if what happens is how do how could NFTs also start accruing those outcomes in more measurable ways? And what could you do with the accrual of those outcomes in relation to the NFTs? Like it, it, it just is an interesting way of coming at even potentially creating the foundations of a market. Marketplace, not the right idea, but a marketplace, a, a way to value and trade and engage in investment of, into these kinds of things um, earlier in the process without without disconnecting them from the actual measured outcomes at the end. This is a big area that IXO is working as well. If you haven't looked much into the internet of impact or the blockchain of impact, um, yeah, they're really innovating in a lot of areas there. And I feel like they would love, love a lot of these ideas too. Awesome. Also welcome to uh, the folks who have just been joining. Uh, glad to have you here. Uh, I see Clearwater, uh, Mayfer Cordovas, and oh, it looks like uh, the other guy just left. But thank you guys for joining. Uh, if you have any questions for the team or any uh, any yeah any questions about what we're doing or um, kind of what's new in the space, uh, feel free to drop us a line. Ah, Justin, welcome. Yeah, do you guys have any questions? It's an AMA, you know? <laughs> or you can share what you're working on and introduce yourself as a start. Yeah, we always like to hear what, what other folks in the space are, are working on here. You know, Justin, I saw you posted something that looked kind of interesting too, so I'd love to hear about that. Um, and here guys can you hear me we can i have i don't normally use discord for video chat i couldn't figure out why there was music i think it was the the groovy the groovy bot yep you can also adjust the <laughs> sound you can also adjust the volume on the groovy bot if you right click on it in the uh, in the chat list okay. so if it's cool. too loud. there's you know Today, there's so many, so many chat platforms, so many things to remember. Like, it's crazy. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting old when I can't figure out uh, how to use uh, every single platform. Um, hi, hi, everybody. Nice to meet you. Those that I haven't met before. Oh, approved. Okay. There we go. That work. So, so like, I guess one question that I have is like, what are the, um, how do you see the ways in which Common Stack can engage with other initiatives? Um, what does that look like? How do you see that playing out over time? I... Jess, I think this is your question. Oh, is this me? So, hello, Michael. I'm just, I'm wearing a lot of hats here, um, but I primarily am doing a lot in the ecosystem development realm. So we have so many partnerships and collaborators that we work with on different levels. I am working on mapping some of that out so that it's more visible as well. Um, primarily through some research initiatives. So I guess I can just list off kind of the more recent or some of the things that we're doing. So I guess our you know, primary partnerships, and uh, Griff can speak to this more, is 
through the common swarm and the development team, they're kind of decentralized in that they work with a few different organizations. So they're developing um, with One Hive, and um, they're also working on the smart contracts for um, the token engineering commons. So I don't know if you've had a chance to read our article, Zen and the Art of Understanding, that kind of lays out, and we can share it again in the chat here, it kind of lays out the different arms of the common stack. Um, so I can maybe pull that up as a nice little visual. Um, so yeah, the, the various ways depend on uh, which which part of the common stack you're looking at. So I'll just share screen and then just go over a few of the partnerships and uh, collaborations we have by uh, by our chakras here that we have. Oops. Can you see my screen? I also dropped the link in the community hall chat if anyone wants oh, okay. it later. Thanks, Chris. So yeah, through the trusted seed, um, we are working on some, uh, the main kind of partnerships or collaborations is having the trusted seed support in launching um, different commons and that's also uh, commons deployments. So for example, the first deployment of the common stack pattern is uh, the token engineering commons. And then the development group, as I said, is working on a lot of the smart contracts. So we have, for example, uh, augmented bonding curve, uh, which is a regenerative funding model. And that is going to be uh, a pattern that many groups might instantiate in order to have a common pool of resources that they're, that they're managing um, and a funding model where some of the funding goes into a community funding pool that's, that's governed together. They also have developed the contracts for conviction voting, which we have a nice tweet thread about uh, real-time voting. I guess you can think of it as and um, there's a lot of wormholes here. So, so yeah, with conviction voting, there's a lot of groups coming to us saying that they want to uh, deploy that. So uh, the creator of conviction voting, the one who, the, the lead engineer, I suppose, is working on building a chain agnostic version because um, there's a lot of different ecosystems that would like to use that tech. Um, and governance is a huge area of research that we now, uh, it has spun out into its own group called the Governance, and that's a partnership with the TE Academy that's going to be going uh, a focused research group, working group in October. Um, and then another big area of exploration for us is Dow to Dow collaboration. So we have a partnership with Prime Dow. Um, Jeff wrote a big article on some really interesting mechanisms that make DAOs kind of more efficient. And then we've just, uh, we're going to be announcing a big partnership with Regen Network. And I was going to actually say Regen Network is probably um, a, a project that you'd want to look at, Michael, for what you're talking about and having some impact uh, markets. They're working specifically on regenerative land management and carbon credits, but and they're on Cosmos SDK. So we are doing a big partnership with them. Uh, we're going to become the first uh, community staking DAO. So the trusted seed is going to govern a big pool of C regen tokens. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're working with so many different organizations across the board, primarily on token engineering and research initiatives, and then looking at, um, you know, ways that these different parts and development areas of the common stack can be shared and spread as patterns on either other blockchains or throughout other projects. I guess the last most exciting, well, one of the most exciting projects also is we're working on with Paul Stamets, the uh, very famous mushroom researcher on looking at some NFT and token and token models in order to bootstrap funding around one of his um, environmental initiatives. So there are a few at the edges on the ground projects and we want to find ways uh, to work with, you know, more ground level projects, although there's a big, you know, education and technical gap there. So I could go on and on, but I'll stop there. <laughs> there's, there's loads going on and we're just, uh, yeah, I guess, we're blessed with having to choose between incredibly awesome projects all the time to work with, but we hope that eventually the tech can kind of trickle down to the ground and start to create regenerative funding streams for some of these, uh, you know, groups trying to solve the world's biggest problems. Like in Canada too, we have people, there's cutting down of, of old growth forests here. Um, so 
you know, trying to stream funding to some of these groups that are that are working on some of these areas. Yeah, I guess a clarification on your on your question, Michael, it, for near term, that's a lot of the collaborations that are currently going on with kind of like our technical partners in terms of uh, communities that are like we're kind of building for. Uh, we aim to have this library of sort of customizable models and different primitives, token primitives, governance primitives, um, you know, dispute resolution primitives. And hopefully we make this very easy for communities one day to come into this library and kind of look at the range of use cases of commons that have been deployed. Um, the, the token engineering commons is the first deployment that is putting that is using the common stack design pattern uh, to deploy for their community. But hopefully we, we will make this very large library of models and different components that can be combined in different ways. And there are probably, you know, social benefit use cases that will become sort of like this is the, the pattern that works for that. There will be, um, you know, more probably um, business like DAOs. Here's a pattern that usually works for that. Um, and we imagine there will be different sort of uh, replicable patterns that can be um, combined in with these different uh, primitives to create um, commons that can be used uh, for communities in the long run. But as Jessica mentioned, we're still very deep in the in the technical building of a lot of these tools before they're easy to use for the communities. Um, and I think that's where a lot of the your interest is in, in where that they hit the ground kind of thing. Is that correct? I'm actually, I'm actually I'd, I'd say like, I'm, I'm super interested in um, the underlying thinking around the design principles of these things. Um, I'm less concerned about the actual on the ground implementation because there's, there's ways to just scope simplify the scope to just get something out there right now um, and I'm thinking longer term and some of those uh, those underlying choices I think are what are most interested for thinking about how even the project that I'm trying to do is how does this evolve like how do we what does it mean to actually push or drive engagement with and beneficiaries that that cross those chasms that aren't just within small sets of those who are able to understand, engage and use this stuff. Like, what does it mean to be truly um, representative and engage with ecosystems and how can we use all this to empower that? So there's a ton of questions for me on that path. And those are the, th the, the, the things that I'm, I'm really interested in, in thinking through and helping to, to contribute shape nudge, however, however they make sense for the long term. Yeah, and I guess I should say too, we kind of think of our audience or our, you know, community, I guess is a better word, in concentric circles. So our main core focus is on token engineers and people who kind of are very deep in Web3, but maybe don't, under, you know, understand some different token issuance models or um, certain aspects of governance um, and the cultural build that, that Livia and the TEC uh, has been very heavily focused on. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I guess the the second layer is people who, you know, maybe understand crypto but uh, haven't haven't heard of token engineering. Um, so we're trying to kind of introduce them to some of the ideas of, you know, how engineering fits into blockchain development. And then, yeah, we're not so much focused on people who don't yet understand Web three and crypto because there's just such a big education, you know gap to get to token engineering um, but that being said you know we hope to kind of bring people down you know the journey and and introduce them to concepts and we hope that they're you know we can have some education towards this but but yeah i think this is where the community staking DAO model that i mentioned with regen is very interesting because that is their exact core is they're trying to um they want to have like land stewards and scientists and researchers that are stewarding governance over their network. So uh, Greg Lindu, their founder, came up with this model that they're hoping is going to like slowly trickle out like you're talking about. So it's an interesting model and I don't know that anyone's kind of figured it out yet. I still feel there's such a gap between like intro to blockchain education and then even with token engineering. Um, the TE Academy, you know, can can only educate so many people as fast as possible, and that's a big part of it is education. 
Yeah, and I, I think where I'm coming at it from is, is more just on the, not to try and solve those problems yet, but to just be mindful of our decisions that we're making in the design or, or structuring of some of these primitives. How do they, how might they influence our path towards those things? Like, are there considerations to be thinking about in, in, in certain design mechanisms, certain governance protocol? Like, I'm not sure. It's just like, it's just trying to bring that that end game thinking into is, is how I'm trying to try to navigate right now. Like, are, where are the key leverage points? Where are the, the things where it really matters? And how much of that is just um, overcomplicating? So, I'm sure I'm conscious of that. So what, what, what right now is the Commons Tech's biggest, like, uh, biggest challenges? Is it, is it funding? Is it engineering work? Is it uh, exposure? Like what's, what's the biggest challenge right now for, for the, for the Commons Tech as a whole? Funding is definitely a challenge. Uh, you know, in the end, we're more, we're structured like a nonprofit for the most part. So funding is always, well, we're, we're looking for to hire a fundraiser. So. Clearly, funding is a is, is like the challenge on our mind, uh, and there's there's a lot of challenges. You know, uh, I just gave a talk on the collective psychosis around public goods, and I feel like that is uh, kind of the core of our challenge. This this idea that I mean, we want to create micro economies that rep that effectively can, in in simple terms, quantify the value of of a community coordinating around producing a public good, right? Uh, not necessarily quantifying the public good itself, but quantifying the coordination of the work that it takes to provide the public good. And public goods have value, everyone sees that, but we're very used to public goods being given to us, like from governments who get their funding from taking, right? Like. Without, so, and then the other side is when governments fail to provide the public good, we get it from nonprofits, and nonprofits expect sacrifice and donations and volunteers and being underpaid. And so there's this like, uh, we're clearly not a government. So we generally fall into that nonprofit side and, um, and also the, the economies that we're building on, people are used to thinking of it like, well, they're supposed to sacrifice. People aren't supposed to be paid. They're not supposed to be rewarded for creating this value. You know, and that, that they, they're like, yes, it's valuable, but people aren't supposed to be rewarded for it. And that psychosis is like, uh, it's really critical to us because we're creating economies with, that have like speculative assets, right? And those assets value is based on that, the value of that work. So the, while it's, it's like overcoming the psychology to me is, is our biggest challenge long. -term. Yeah, that's a, that's an ongoing challenge for pretty much, uh, all of humanity. Right. <laughs> um, I, I get that for sure. I, I fall into the camp of, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I run startups. They're all for profit. And, you know, over, you know, the 20 something years of my career, I try to uh, help out as much as I can in the public good space, but I never, there was never a match for that to, uh, to be my career choice, right? Not that I didn't want to do that. It was just, you know, nobody would pay me enough to do it, <laughs> um, which you say to some people, it sounds horrible. They're like, oh, why would you want to get paid? Like, it's, it's, you're supposed to do that. So um, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I really love what's going on here. Like I, I'm involved right now. I'm just spread out and I'm just involved in a whole ton of places and all the DAOs I'm involved in, all the different public goods that I advise, they're all facing the exact same problems. And when I say problems, I don't mean like the same, like not the problem they're actually trying to solve, whether that's, you know, basic income, whether that's, you know, the environmental challenge, it's just the normal problems of like, how do we get a token? How do we structure our DAO? How do we vote? How do we like all those regular things, um, which is what really excited me uh, when I caught on to the common stack I hadn't caught on before. I was like, oh, wow, how, how much sense does this make? Like build materials and go from the bottom up and just give people stuff to build up. Uh, a, a great approach that I've seen a lot of other people are taking this approach of like, oh, we'll just build this one point and then we'll have everybody build under us or we'll build everything down underneath. 
uh, which just doesn't work in the long run. I don't think, at least not with, I think, um, a public good. Um, I guess I'm just basically <laughs> reflecting your guys' normal talking points. But, uh, you know, that's, that's what excites me about it, so. Yeah, convivial tools, as they're called in the commons, tools that can be shared and, and reused. And uh, I think that's how we can hit. Um, and I, I would say that what goes along with that, one of the other big challenges we face is uh, education. And it's, you know, the just the sheer, like there's so much breadth and there's so much depth uh, and everyone's coming from different backgrounds. So it's really difficult to establish kind of that common ground of like what exactly we're doing because it's so easy to get into you know this we're all builders and and uh, researchers so sometimes we get like to get into the rabbit holes and the details and the you know the bleeding edge but most people just need to hear the high level of like what this technology is going to do or why rather than the how so there's 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 how people and there's why people and they're all mixing together and when they when the how people hear the why stuff or the, or the why people hear the how stuff it gets really like mixed messages i'd say education and and just understanding sort of the context and and what we're building and yeah and why and how is a is a tricky challenge as well yeah for sure i mean for mainstream adoption you know it's mostly um why not how right like abstracting as much of that way as possible like most people trying to solve these problems, even now that we're moving into the, you know, the human blockchain, we're, we're now including humanity, we're including things like art and environmentalism and all these great services. Um, you know, most of those people don't really, not that they don't care about the how, but the how just gets to be more and more complex. Um, it's more about the why, like use this, this is why, and uh, yeah, education for sure, it's so cool. I usually say we're we're selling the sports car, but we're still engineering the combustion engine. You know, we're we're talking a big game about a product that people can or a community can just get in and use to get from A to B. Uh, but and before that, we need to fundraise to build all the tools, design, model, spec, deploy, redeploy. Uh, so there's a long kind of I guess development arc before the sports car is built. Although that's kind of how we talk about it. Um, and, you know, the deeper engineering of the parts is still underway. Awesome. Speaking of the tools and uh, why we use them, have uh, has everybody in here uh, been introduced to the praise system that we use? And uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to just going to bring that in there because uh, technically we have a, an onboarding session scheduled for right after this. but. If any of you haven't uh, haven't used Praise, uh, it's a great time to introduce you to it, I suppose. So um, basically, the Praise system is uh, we use it to make sure that everyone uh, in the community is able to recognize value that's being added, and uh, and recognize it through the organization as well. So calling it out, um, saying what you've what you've seen as valuable, and uh, and it gets logged so that we quantify it um, as a team and as a community at the end of each month. So um, the idea is that uh, we have a bot uh, in both our Telegram and our, uh, and our Discord servers uh, to recognize a, a particular command. Um, in Discord, you also need a, uh, a specific role just so that we don't get a lot of spam uh, into that uh, praise system. But the idea is that you just uh, write the command, which in Discord is exclamation mark praise, um, and then you tag whoever you've seen uh, generating value for the community, and then just a brief description of what what they've done that you've uh, that you've seen is valuable. And really, you can you can praise any number of things. It doesn't matter really how big or small uh, it is, as long as you see that there's there's value that's being added. Uh, because it all gets quantified uh, by the team in the community uh, at the end of each month. So each praise is not necessarily equal, uh, but it's really great uh, to get the praise out there and visible. The other nice thing um, about the praise system that we have uh, is that it also sends everyone who is praised a DM. So it's kind of a nice little reminder that, oh yeah, I've, I've done something. Someone recognized what I've done. Uh, it's actually being seen as valuable. So um, there's a really big benefit there uh, in terms of just that feedback. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, you guys will all get praise for joining uh, this call today. So thank you for joining us here. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll be praising you after the call. You can kind of see how it's how it works. Also, because I've explained it all to you, uh, to everyone here, I'll I'll make sure that you all have the role that allows you to dish praise, and you guys can feel free dig in uh, however you uh, feel comfortable. Um, dish praise to anyone that you see uh, contributing here. Um, we have a specific channel that uh, called the praise uh, praise channel that um, it's it's just under the general memes and then praise. Uh, but yeah, if you most of the channels will the bot will still pick it up, but just to be uh, safe, it's it's really easy to dish in there. So um, yeah. The, the other thing I should say is that all of that praise, uh, when it does get quantified, it turns into C stack tokens. So um, again, that, that's just the common stack, uh, non-transferable reputation token, um, feeds into your C stack score. Um, and yeah, there's all the various uh, uses of, of C stack throughout the organization, but uh, I'll leave that to you guys to explore uh, a little bit. Uh, although. If you have questions about any specific things, that's also what this time is for. So, um, but yeah, just wanted to dive in and, and get uh, get praise introduced to you to all of you, just so you can, uh, if you haven't dug into it, that you can. So. Um, but yeah, with uh, with that, does anyone? Uh, Anyone else that hasn't uh, chimed in want to introduce yourself, uh, talk about what you're working on, or have any questions? Feel free to jump in, unmute at any time. Or we can just enjoy the smooth, smooth vibes here. <laughs> Well, have you guys seen the the hatch? You know, we we've been working for like a year with our first partner, Economy, first partner project, Token Engineer Common. I don't know if you, have you guys actually seen the hatch and uh, checked out, tried it out. Hey, Daniel. Um, yeah, well, if you haven't checked it out, I would strongly recommend it. Like, definitely, uh, I would throw in, I, I, if you're interested in the common stack, you know, obviously get, um, go ahead and get, you have to apply to the trusted seed and actually activate your membership. And activated members can participate in the hatch. And even if you just throw in $5 to see how everything works out, it'll be a very, uh, huge interactive like um, yeah it'll be an it's an opportunity to learn how this whole system is going to work out and uh, have get your hands dirty with it but uh, well yeah Daniel uh, welcome to the party did you have any uh, questions for us thanks not uh, not today I just wanted to see what uh, what was going on well, maybe I'll just keep calling on other random people too. Uh, what about Zero? How's it going, Zero? Oh no, the saw, mic's not working. Saw oh, the yeah, mute. Wait. Saw the mute come off, but ah, uh, uh, my mic was off. Hi guys. There it is. So, uh, I'm pretty off these uh, weeks. Like I'm in the mountains. I don't have uh, necessarily a good internet connection, but. Uh, I uh, I kind of missed missed uh, these calls <laughs> because I guess you're uh, you've all been at the Ethereum conference. So how was that? Oh man, it was awesome. Uh, I I had a blast. Maybe I'll pass it to Dan. How how was your time at the? E Minus COVID, everything was super incredibly awesome. I will do it again. Uh, yay. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally worth it. Oh, guys, I just wanted to let you guys know that Muffer down here, uh, we I was just onboarding her as a junior gardener. 
So she's joining us and listening a little bit. I was telling her behind the scenes, oh, this is Chris, this is Jeff, this is Jess, this is Griff, this is Ivy. So, you know, you'll get to know her. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I'll pass it. Back to you, Griff. I don't know what we're doing, really. Well, Olivia was at ECC. Did you have any um, feedback on it? Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was great to see everyone in uh, multidimensional uh, pieces and not just like the screen we have here. And uh, yeah, really like hearing about all the projects that are happening and all the work people have been doing in this pandemic times. And then when everybody gets together, it's just an explosion of greatness that is coming from the space. And also really cool to see how the public goods talks and um, the the valuing of the open source that it's so aligned with the common stack uh, mission is really like being pushed forward. And a lot of people are very excited about that and also about culture. That is a piece we've been holding uh, strongly and people are curious about how to bring more cultural practices to their communities and um, yeah, just seeing the power of healthy relationships in the space. Also, welcome. Uh, it looks like we've got Peter joining us as well. Um, thanks for thanks for jumping into the call. Uh, feel free to jump in with any questions you might have, uh, anything that we haven't answered yet. Um, that's what this call is for. So feel free. Or, or even just jump in and introduce yourself uh, if you haven't done that yet this call, so. Yeah, yeah Innovator. Yeah, hi everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm here, so I'm going to jump. I've got some music playing, is that normal? Oh, yes, yeah. So if you, if it's too loud, uh, if you want to adjust the volume, you can right click on uh, the user Groovy in the uh, in the kind of list of who's you who's here, and you can adjust okay. the volume up I'm and on down. A, I'm on the mobile, so I haven't got the right key. Should we put a stop to the? Yeah, we can we can bot. turn off the view the bot. Uh, you don't know want to do on the mobile. There we go. Should be should be yeah. muted for everybody now. Great, thanks. Hi everyone. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, can I ask a question? You bet. Great, thanks. Um, I'm, I'm kind of very interested in this um, uh, difference between. Uh, I mean, th there's a group that I work with where we're looking at things like debit and credit ways of working um, for people to be able to kind of earn their way. Uh, you know, into a into a DAO, um, or a sort of a tokenomics approach, and I'm just interested what people here see as, you know, is there a preference on on which way to go? Is there a do people prefer tokenomics, or you know, is is a debit and credit credit approach a possibility? So I'm just interested to to know what people think. I definitely think people prefer tokenomics. Um, yeah, but, but I, I would say that like, you know, a lot of these airdrops that you just like, oh, what is this token? You know, you just sell it. It's not quite. That's not really great tokenomics. Uh, what's better is like what you said. Like people earn their way in, and mm -hmm. people need to feel like they earned it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and like the Uniswap airdrop is a great example because. Only people who touched the Uniswap protocol got free tokens. That was a lot of people. But honestly, the people who got them early were using Uniswap early. They felt like, well, yeah, I, I was using Uniswap. I earned these tokens, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I go to that website. Like, I know Uniswap. It's something in my head. When you're instead just doing an airdrop to people who don't even know you or don't care or never... Don't there's not even a good excuse on why they got the tokens. It's like, oh yeah, because you have this other token. Then it's not as clean, you know. 
Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm still learning, so any, anything is helpful. I, I think one of the great things about the DAO space is that there could be a, you know any size of organization with any different approach. Like, I don't think there's ever going to be like, a, oh, this is the one approach to uh, governance or participation in a DAO. Um, for some, it might be tokenomic based, especially in DeFi and stuff. They love that. They want to be involved in the in the tokenomics from the beginning. They want, I, I don't want to say plutocracy, but like more of like a financially governed uh, system. Whereas, you know, others like, you know, Proof of Humanity, I'm very involved in now, like we're experimenting with sort of this liquid democracy version where, you know, it's one person, one vote. There is no real tokenomics to it. Um, I think that's the beauty is there won't be any like, oh, that's the one way you're supposed to do it. It'll be like, here's all the different ways people do it. This is the pros and cons. Go do it however you want. Uh, but that's my personal opinion. But yeah. Yeah, uh, I've been involved in a few different DAOs that uh, really did make it uh, kind of a goal to have at least a pathway in uh, through earning in um, rather than just necessarily um, maybe buying in or or that kind of thing and i think that's something that we've really um tried to hone in on uh with the common stack as well in terms of our the trusted seed membership um i know we've we had a talk uh peter in terms of um kind of the different ways to to get that there's the membership fee the membership dues uh that you can pay um generally that's uh that's kind of the low bar for everyone except that um, we also have the full scholarship available if if the cost of um, of that is too high. But also, again, we we talked about this um, a little bit as well. We have because we have a lot of contributors that come in and uh, and generate value, um, and we have we have a way to uh, remunerate those contributors as well. And if they there's no there's no reason that they have to use uh, what they earn uh, to buy back into the commons. Uh, to the to common stack, but it is it is a pathway for them to earn and uh, and at least defray those costs if that's something that they want to put that towards. So, um, but yeah, certainly those pathways into getting involved um, super important. And I, I really to me uh, having more pathways t available rather than just focusing on one um, is is more advantageous just to to get engagement. Um, but again, that's that's kind of just coming from from my background. But uh, I see a lot of value in that. I think having different routes in means you can talk to different audiences. Yeah, makes sense to me. Yeah, great. Uh, that That's lovely. Thank you. I don't, I don't want to kind of take up too much time. So thanks. No problem. That's what this is for. Uh, if anyone has questions, it's uh, it's open floor. <laughs> Thank you very much. Musashi was asking in the community hall channel uh, about impact hours and how they turn into and how they um, be playing for the TEC. So the the token engineering commons, the the first commons to use the common stack design pattern, had uh, to use praise as a way to actually distribute tokens initially. So kind of like what we were saying, innovator about like how people have to feel like they earn the tokens. What's cool about the praise system is you you got them from like people praising you and then it's like oh yeah this is how i got it you know it's like actually every token was backed by praise like someone actually showing some gratitude and um and so then though that actually created um a list of people who get so many who have so many impact hours but the number of tokens that they get is not really determined there's a um, it's it's dependent on the um on how much is raised by the tec so if the tec re reaches its min goal then 25 percent of the total token supply goes to people with impact hours if it reaches its target goal then 20 percent of the total supply will go to the token holders the impact hour token holders but it'll actually be more than uh that that will be worth more like 20 percent of three million right is worth more than um 25 percent of 800k so there's this nice alignment of incentives where um the the people who put if we if the tec raises more money then uh the backers get more governance power the people who send in money contributed more so that they get more governance power overall 
but it but at the same time if the work that was done at the beginning was able to raise more funds then also the value of that work is worth more right and so uh, even though they get less governance power they get more uh, um, va- like their governance power is worth more that they do get so it's kind of a cool um a cool alignment of incentives uh, whereas most and you can kind of think of this as like the team percent and if you guys have ever participated in an ICO or one of those things you know it's always like 10% goes to the team or something like that it doesn't matter if they raise 100k or the 1 billion oh uh, yeah they get 10% and it's just like okay um so this was a was a cool like uh innovation that the TC kind of pulled out and uh but you don't get those tokens until and this was Musashi's question. You don't actually get any tokens until the end of the hatch when the amount that is collected is actually determined. And yeah. So yeah. Well, maybe, maybe I'll pass it to Mayfer Cordovas to uh, introduce herself as the new, uh, the new junior gardener. Hi, thank you. Uh, can you guys hear me well? <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you so much for the welcoming. Uh, I got the news this morning, so <laughs> I'm still sinking in on the on the news. But it's great to be part of the of this community because more than a team and and a, an organization, this is a community. Uh, and the more that uh, I get to discover about the the core. Uh, I get more excited to be part of the of the this team that makes impact somewhere some way or or another. So I'm very excited to to start this experience and just getting to know uh, more details about everyone here. Thank you so much. Well, we're excited to have your support. Corralling the trusted seed is a lot of work. Uh, Dan's been on his own over there. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I just, I just, mm-hmm. Oh, go, go. I just wanted to apologize for the delays in assessments. You will get your emails soon, guys. I know two of you are here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything will be uh, up and running very soon uh, from Venezuela here and um, getting to all the global community. Should we also let Akeme um, introduce himself? Because I think this is the first time he's joined the AMA. So I just want to welcome Akeme. Um, in our last couple of minutes here, he uh, joined our team a couple of weeks ago as content distribution and social media manager. So he's supporting with communications. Akeme? Hi guys, um, good evening from Nigeria, and it's good to see all the faces, Jess, Grace, Chris, everyone. Hi, yes, this is officially my first game, the other one did not count, <laughs> we were just hanging in the other one, so this is officially, and it's quite excited, like, I joined in late, but um, all the explanations and questions people that have been coming and the explanation, I mean, it made a lot of sense why it, it's a regular thing. It, it gets to clear out a whole lot and uh, get a better understanding of where we're headed as a community and um, we stand. So, yeah, I'm really excited to be here and pleasure to meet you all. Thanks, Akene. And yeah, thank you for uh, for all the work you're doing, uh, keeping our socials, keeping everybody on their toes. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's needed work, and you're doing a great job. So thanks for that. Um, all right. Thanks, Chris. No problem. Yeah, I mean, I guess we've got. I guess we're kind of running up to the end uh, of the time we have booked. Um, 
like I said uh, earlier, uh, the next half hour is actually already scheduled for uh, praise onboarding. So if you're interested, um, we can stick around here for a couple extra minutes. Uh, I can kind of run over what praise, how the praise system works uh, for anyone who may have missed it. Um, but yeah, other other than that, I mean, thank thank you everybody for for joining us here today, for bringing your energy and your thoughts and questions. Um, that's the best way to make these calls worthwhile. Um, so thank you guys all for for joining and contributing. It's so really for those of us that are still so for those of us that are still testing the water here after this, what's the best place weekly for us to if we're not already involved in one particular group inside of the commons or contributing to one place? Like, what's the best place for us to keep uh, the conversation going week to week? Yeah. So I mean, generally our our Discord kind of the the general text channels are probably your your main spot um, if you're interested in a particular like working group or area um, I mean we have uh, I just kind of went over the the kind of um, specific focuses in the um, in the article understanding or Zen in the understanding the common stack um, so yeah if you're interested in something like if you're a developer we've got the developer group if you're a if you're really wanting to focus on helping us uh, hone in our communications and do some writing that kind of thing we've got the communications group um, if you're yeah if you want to get uh, if you want to start helping with uh, the trusted seed and things like uh, around membership that'd be uh, Dan that would be best to contact um, I'm sure oh research um, if you're looking into governance research and tools and things like that, that's probably Jeff. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, did I miss any specific areas? Um, there, but yeah, basically, it really depends on what you what your skills are um, and how you want to kind of put those to use. Where there's there's things to do in every area, we could use we could use you anywhere. So um, yeah, it really just depends on how how you want to get involved and where. <laughs> And also, if you're looking to use the toolkit, um, basically the the TEC deployment is a really good kind of uh, movement to watch. It's it's like do, going through all the pieces, parameterizing all of the tools. Uh, so if you're looking to like deploy these for a community, that's a really great space to watch and sort of see all of the um, uh, decisions that need to be made and pieces that need to come together to create these uh, these commons. Yeah, it's the first commons, the first economy ever designed uh, in a democratic way from the get-go. So if you want to uh, participate in participatory economics, uh, just throw a couple of dollars into the into the hatch, and you'll be able to vote on designing the bonding curve and voting uh, commons that cops out. That's probably the most exciting. I would say. Well, thank you guys. Uh, great AMA.